Okay, continue on with the heater core today. Um, this is the heater core that came out of the original uh, heater core from the from the car. Um, it's, I left it outside. It's got snow on it. It's no good anyways. And this was my spare one. I took them both in to get tested, and they both leak. And uh, the rad shop said that they wouldn't fix it. It was too old, but they could build me a new one for like 305 bucks. So then I went to Rock Auto and got that one for 50 delivered to my door. So I'm going to put that in, in one of these boxes today. This is the one that was originally in the car. See a little crusty up there. I got to finish cleaning it out in that. And this was the parts car one. I'm going to go to uh, compare the two, see which one's got the best parts, clean it up and and reassemble it, get ready to put it in the car. Um, I'm gonna test these fans. That's one's, it was seized at one point. I haven't even tested it see if it works. This one looks okay. Well, it spins easier. I'll put power to them and see what happens. But I'll mix and match parts and take the best from the two, put it together with the new uh, little tiny rad in there, the, the heater core. And, uh, Put it all back together, lube everything up, get my, uh, oh, that's still pretty stiff, my vents lubed up in that, and put it all back in together and put it back in the car. Well, there it is, pretty much cleaned up. I'm gonna give it a quick wipe down again. Got all the crud out of it. <coughs> Excuse me, now I can get ready to mount that. In there, cover over, fan on, and hook everything up. Okay, I got the uh, heater box all back together. Um, just kind of cleaned it up and reassembled it. When I put the uh, the metal plates on the back here, uh, I put in some uh, like weather stripping foam to seal it up. There was some there before, but it disintegrated because the thing's you know 57 years old. So I did that, and then the flap that's inside there, I also put uh, weather stripping on that. So I'm gonna test the uh, the resistor here. Uh, to see if the various fan speeds work and there's I think that's a medium there's low and there's high so I got my three speeds and that's the original blower motor too it was just uh, need to be cleaned up lubed all these up these all work now and the other, the other side so I'm just going to clean up under the dash, wipe down everything for the crit of the mouse piss and that, and uh, that's ready to go back in the car. Okay, uh, I think the last you seen was I'd reassembled the uh, heater core, put a new uh, little rad inside of it, reassembled it, and uh, now I've got it all up and back in the dash, installed, hooked up again. Um, Adjusted some of the, the slider controls to open the, to open the vent for the you know, floor or windshield or whatever. Uh, a couple of them were, were bent, they've been mangled, so I replaced them with some parts cars, part from the parts car. Um, I got a bunch of little projects on the go. Uh, the carpet's come in, so I'm ready to put that in, or I'm ready to put it in, the car's not ready yet. I gotta clean all this up. Carpet come in, uh, looks good, it's original, or like factory original, formed all that 
Uh, it's red. Uh, problem I found though was in this car, as with most cars this era, the uh, the high beam switch is on the floor. So you know, older people will know that that's the high beam switch. You hit it with your foot to you know high beam, low beam, and that. But the carpet didn't come with the hole for it. Which okay, I know you got to put holes in for the cart for the bolts for the seat belts and stuff like that. But I figured for the high beam switch there would be a spot because on the factory original there was a plastic uh, or rubberized circle around the button built into the carpet. Well, this didn't have that at all, so you got to cut a hole. And I'm like, oh, that's going to look like crap. So I went on Amazon, and where is it? You can buy just a little grommet I guess it is so uh, I gotta cut a hole in the carpet and put that in there and the high beam switch will go through that so there's that so I'm in the middle of doing that uh, what else did I do so got that for the carpet oh I got my speedometer all working on cleaning my speedometer up um, I gotta clean it and stuff uh, I got the clock out because I want to uh, the clock doesn't work I got it over there I'm gonna tear it apart Gonna tear it apart and see if I can get it working, but that's where it goes. Uh, that gauge worked. Uh, everything else worked. I think I was noticing the mileage is fifty nine thousand miles, and based on the the floor, and I'm only the second or well, third owner. Second owner never did. Uh, he did body work. We never drove it, or they never got in the road. So I might I'm, I might even be original, judged by the said the floor and the. Uh, the wear on the gas pedal and the brake pedal, uh, or lack of wear. Anyways, so I'm working on this. Now my fuel gauge and my temperature gauge didn't work at all. And on a website, not a website, a uh, YouTube channel called uh, Dead Dodge Garage. He actually, hold on here. Uh, Let me show you an old one. This is from the parts car. This, uh, this controls, it goes to the, these two gauges, which is your temperature and fuel gauge. The power goes through this first. And apparently these things fail. And what it does, it takes 12 volts and drops it down to 5 volts to go to, uh, to these gauges. So if both gauges don't work, this is the problem. And it's like a blinker uh, solenoid or whatever you call it. Um, but apparently that's a common problem, they fail. So the, according to Dead Dodge Garage, you can get an electronic version, and that's what this is. I got it off Amazon, and basically it takes the 12 volts that come in, drops it to five consistently, and so you just hook it up to, uh, to the gauges. This is to keep the static out of the radio, but apparently you work that up there too. So now I can just plug this in, and my gauges should work. I got to take some double-sided tape and attach that there. And that'll be that ready to go, other than the clock. So that's a mid-project on that. And then the carpet. Well, this is the one heater hose I haven't put back in from the, from the heater core, because this was full of mouse piss and crap. And so I soaked it in hot water and soapy water and scrubbed it, and that's good to go again. Uh, what's next? Oh, there's the, uh, what's left of the speaker that was in the dash. So it's garbage. The radio, my next project, let's by here. This is the radio for the car. Now it's just an AM radio, and there's nothing on AM. And I had a hard time finding a factory AM FM. Uh, I don't think FM was big back in the 60s. Um, but I could get that, but. I'm just not sure what to do with the stereo. I know some guys, they put like a, a mod, I don't want to put a modern stereo in because I like the look of that. So I'm going to clean it up, keep that. I see, like a CD player and that wouldn't look right. I've seen guys put it into, uh, put it in the glove box and hide it. I could do that, but music's not that important to me. I want, I want, I want this in the car. I want some radio background or whatever, you know. So I'm going to put the stereo in. It's not going to be hooked up. It's just going to be there. It might light up for the, you know the dash lights and that but it's not going to be hooked up but what i did do is 
Oh, another box I got around here somewhere. What did I do with it? I gotta clean this garage, I can't find anything. Oh, here we are. Is I bought 12 volt Bluetooth speakers. They're actually a marine thing, so I'm gonna have to paint them because they're white. Ugh. They're white, but uh, I'm gonna mount this under the dash where the original speaker was, and then, uh, and then the, in the back seat, which I have out right now, there's a spot between the two, basically in the middle of the seat itself, there's a screen that uh, optionally you could have a speaker there. I have the screen, never had a speaker in this particular car. So I'll put the other speaker, came with two speakers, mounted there, and then it wires into this little box here. And basically put 12 volts to it, so I'll hook up the power that would basically for the radio. So when the key comes on, it comes on. And then you hook your speakers up, but this is Bluetooth. So I'll hide this under the dash and basically I can hook my phone up to the speakers and play music through my phone or podcasts or whatever I normally listen to. You can probably get a radio app type thing, play music. So I'll still have music in the car, no problem getting it. Up to date speakers, but they'll be hidden, you won't see them. It'll still look like a 67 car. Um, and I'll, I'll leave the original stereo in there just for looks. So that's, that's how, what I'm doing with the stereo. Um, I think that's all, you know, once you get the carpet and everything in, the dash all back together, dash back together first, carpet all back in, steering column back up, then I'll start stripping down those seats. Um, I want to make sure I get the dash lights and everything working first, so it's, so I got a bunch of little projects, I got, you know, I want to do this first, this first, this first, this first. I'm kind of halfway in the middle of a bunch of them. Um, I think the clock is the next thing I'm going to work on. I'm going to tear it apart, clean it up, so I can put the dash cluster back together and put it in. And then make sure all the dash lights work. And get the speakers up in there. So put the dash all back together. Clean up the floor. I take the gas pedal out because the carpet goes underneath it. And for my parts car, I have a gas pedal. It's got chrome around it. And same with the brake pedal. Just to dress it up, I'll do that. Oh, seat belts. That's the other thing I'm working on. I might re-dye these or whatever. Or replace them. I'm still looking into that. But I, I thought I was short seat belts. I have the two retractor ones that go... Where do they go? There. For the front. And then I had a middle one bolted up as well for the front. So I had three seat belts in the front. I had none in the back, but the bolts are there. You see one there, one there, one there. Um, I went through my boxes of parts. I only had one other seat belt, and it was like a middle one, like a, an adjustable one. Well, it turns out, uh, doing some research, there are no retractors, like, you know, the spring-loaded retractors you get when you put your seat belt out. You know, they, they don't have those for the back only in the front so the seat belts in the back are the style that are like this that you, you know you pull through the buckle to adjust the, the tightness on it so that's what's supposed to be in the back on both sides and apparently uh, they only came with two seat belts in the front two seat belts in the back you could get a third for the middle for front and back as an option but considering I only have two of these adjustable ones and then two with the retractors, like mine only came with four seat belts. So I'm just going to leave it like that because um, I'll never find matches to these. Or like I said, if I buy them, apparently speedway.com uh, there has uh, similar looking seat belts in black. But I don't know, I might see if I can clean these up and re dye them or something. That's down the road. But. Uh, Seatbelt mystery solved. I only have four for a car this size, even though it seats about 20. <laughs> I got me a Chrysler, and it's about 20, so hurry up! <laughs> I only have four. Um, I might just put the four in. Uh, what else? Oh, I recovered the dash. Not sure if I did a video on that or not. I just took some uh, leather, then basically literally recovered it. 
The problem is you can see where the cracks used to be, but uh, it looks a lot better than it was. Not perfect. I probably should have ground that down and filled them full of Bondo or something to make it smooth, but uh, it looks a lot better than it did. I'm not sure if I covered that before or not. Oh. So that's where I am anyway. That's up to date. Everything's kind of halfway through a bunch of different jobs. Um, I also got to rebuild. The, I said this is my glove box. It's kind of disintegrated cardboard. So I'm going to try and keep that. Make a template out of it. Out of, I don't know, a thicker cardboard or plastic maybe. or I might even just make metal. But, uh, and put some felt lining in it or something. But that, yeah, that's disintegrated. That's no good. It's all these fiddly little jobs. Now the windshield's in, I can start putting the chrome back on. There's a big chrome piece up here that goes. Uh, wipers, I gotta get the wipers working. That's something else on the list. It's all these little things, but uh, take time. But that's where I am. So now you're all caught up. Okay, I've tore apart my clock. Just took the, the face plate off. And the little needles and art, like the second hand and arm, uh, hour hand and minute hand. And that's what I get down to. Now, I went online, of course, everything's on YouTube. And uh, figured out how to work this. I just lubed up the gears a little bit. And when you put power, this is your main power. And this is your ground, which is spring loaded. So when you put the case together, it basically grounds out in the case. So you put power to this and ground to this. And that actually makes these contacts pop open and then everything starts working. And uh, that's all I did. I did a quick cleaning and put power to it and everything just snapped open. And then you can see the gears moving along and everything's working fine. When you disconnect the power, it actually runs for a bit first. But these contacts come apart. And see as they gap out like that. As the, uh, actually you might be able to see... Some of the gears in there moving. As it, as it moves, that get closer and closer and closer. And then when it touches, the clock stops. But by having power to this, it separates them. And keeps the clock running. So I'm going to, uh, I'll go hook up my battery and I'll show you over there. Alright, hopefully you can see that. Now that's the way the clock goes up, right? So, just tuck my ground. I can't find my wire with the alligator clips on, so this is the ground wire. Just tuck it under there so it'll stay. Hook my positive up to the battery. Now, see I'll touch that and these little contacts here will pop open and the clock will start working. Just like that, just there it goes. Now if you can see I turned it over here upside down. You can see the gears starting to go and everything. And that's just turned the second hand, which turns the minute hand, which, you know. But all I did was just clean it up. Put a WD-40 in there. And uh, cleaned those little contacts. They snapped together there. I cleaned them up. Don't make a difference or not. But then just put power to it, and she started working. So I'm going to put it all back together and double check and make sure it still works after it's all together, but uh, I have my clock working again. Like I said, if you take your the wire off, it still runs a bit, but apparently I guess that's so you can, you know, you can disconnect the battery and swap a battery if you have to, and you're not gonna lose time. I don't know if that's really why they did it or not, or just the way the design of the clock is. But you wait long enough, those contacts get closer and closer, and as soon as they touch, the clock stops. But that wire keeps them apart, probably like some kind of magnetic field. And it works great, but I'm just so thrilled. All I had to do was basically clean it up and lube it. And uh, the clock will work again in my, uh, in my car. Okay, I got the uh, wires hooked up to the clock, clock all back together. Turn the power on, and let's see if this works. Look at that, the second hand moves. I'm going to 
one have a clock. You can even hear it ticking. Well, now I can put the dash all back together. Or the instrument cluster anyways. Makes my day. Okay, I got the uh, radio and the clock and actually the whole dash put back together. I tested all the dash lights and the blinker lights and high beam lights and all that uh, before I put it all together. I just got it together. I got to hook the battery back up, uh, put the steering column back up and stuff like that. But uh, I think that's all I'm going to do for today. Okay, I got the uh, dash all together. Um... Tested all the lights, everything. Uh, I pulled out the uh, the dimmer switch, and I didn't film it, but I got a picture of it all corroded. I'll put it in here. Um, anyways, I've cleaned it up, cleaned all the contacts and everything down in there. Pretty simple. There's nothing much to it, so I think I figured it out. Uh, so I'm just going to plug it in and then hook the battery back up and see if I have dash lights. And if I do, and then check everything else works on the dash, uh, then I can start working on the carpet. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's getting closer, but that's where I am now. I'm just going to get ready to put this back in and, uh, move on. Okay, I've just plugged the, uh, dimmer switch in under the dash just hanging there I wanted to make sure it works before I uh, before I put it all back because it's a bit of a pain to get back so I've hooked the battery up and as you see the clock works so that's uh, that's good news if I turn the headlight switch on there we are can't really see it this way but if you look up those are the dash lights there. They, they shine on the panel. They don't go from uh, behind the gauges. So it's a uh, thing works. If I work the, the dimmer wheel, uh, dimmer, or charge is one handed here, or brighter. And there's a little dash light under here. It works too. So let's. Uh, Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn the turn the lights off in the garage and see if we can get that working better. Okay, there's the dash, and there we are. I have dash lights. I have a clock that works. That is freaking awesome. Uh oh, I have one. Well, that's weird. I'm sure what's going on there. If I put my signal... Oh, don't put the signal on. In the middle, it comes on. Turn the signal on, it goes out. Got a short there somewhere. But the dash lights work. And... Where's the four ways? Nope. Which one's my four ways? Well, it's the top. There. There's the four ways. The red the light there is for the high beams. Which I don't think I have on. I've checked all the bulbs and everything, the lights, but under the dash is all good. And I have dash lights. So, yay. So, I think that might be it for this video. I think I'll save the uh, carpet for the next video. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, put that little wheel back in and, uh, dimmer wheel and enjoy the fact I have lights. Wait, I mean, what's this little map light? Does it come on with the lights on? Yeah, there's my little map light. If it comes to the door, no, the door's open, so just on and off. It's kind of cool. Excellent. Huh, now I gotta figure out why my marker lights stay on when the signals aren't on. That's his problem for tomorrow. 
but my clock works. That makes my day. All right, that's it for now.